So hi there, my name is David. I'm a painter based in Cambridge. Now getting out that outdoors and painting on plein air is something I love to do and it's part of my practice as an artist. On plein air is a French term for outside and painting outside is something the artists have been doing for many years. Painting in the great outdoors also means you have to bring your own equipment with you and just like this artist, you can sometimes draw quite a lot of extension. Painting on plein air really came into its own in the 19th century with artists like Claude Monet and other Impressionist artists. Is that working? Mm. Um, yeah. So why bother? Why paint outdoors? Well, capturing the scene direct from the landscape, seeing it with your own eyes as opposed to from a photograph means you see so much more, the play of light, the colour of shadows and the three-dimensionality of the scene. And painting can be, become more alive and from a more immediate response of capturing the scene. Another benefit to painting outdoors is you are so involved with what you are doing, any worries you have soon disappear. Capturing the subject live completely demands all your attention. It can become a kind of meditation. Plain air painting can take place at any time of the year, in the summer or in the winter. I particularly like painting during the winter, capturing the subtle greys and the muted colours of the landscape, the jaggedness of the bare, leafless trees, Winter, for me, is full of atmosphere and mood. Now, I live in East Anglia. It's a flat landscape with big skies, and it provides many, uh, sorry, it provides a variety of different environments for me to paint from mile upon mile of farmland, dense woodland, historic cities, and coastal landscapes. It's full of inspiration for me as an artist, no matter the weather. Now, catching the mood or atmosphere of a particular time of day or of a time of year is something I always try to or endeavour to do. There is perhaps also a quality to a painting that almost captures a silent landscape, even though, in my experience, the situation may not have been a tranquil one. And I don't just paint natural scenes. The historic city of Cambridge, where I live, provides many beautiful buildings to capture. In 2019, I won an On Plain Air Painting Award with this painting of Westcott House. What drew me to this building was I quite liked how the composition of the church behind framed actual, actually the red brick building. So creating a painting on site actually really requires all your skills and concentration. It's a real challenge for any artist, but the payoff is you see the effect of colour and light in its natural environment. Painting on plein air also builds upon your observation skills it's possible to increase the speed of your decision-making as a painter. Now, I started painting when I was around 16. Even back then, I loved to get out and about into nature. The surrounding countryside of Skelmazel, where I grew up, became a sanctuary to me. Rolling hills, the farmland, was a place I could immerse myself in. It was from then I knew I wanted to be an artist. Creating a painting means you don't have to paint everything you see. You can just focus on a part of the landscape, a single tree, or even just a doorway. Like this painting of Pembroke College, painting in this way means it can become a kind of diary, a particular place at a particular time. So my style of painting is probably more closely associated with the Impressionist movement. I love to capture the colour, the light, and it's often the sunrises and the sunsets that this can best be seen. And here I am painting the sun setting in full born fen. So my love for painting nature and the wider landscape is never really just about the end result. Or is it just about a picture to hang on, on someone's wall? It's about the experience. It's about getting away from everyday life and then missing oneself into the landscape. And the gear I take with me can be anything from a simple sketchbook or some watercolours, or maybe a pochard box, which carries all my oil paints and a variety of brushes. Other things I may take with me is a packed lunch, and perhaps some recording equipment, so I can make some videos for later. Okay. So one of the questions I get asked quite a bit is, uh, are there any artists in my family? And the answer is yes. My father was an amateur artist. He used to paint seascapes. He also worked at the uh, as a gallery attendant at the Walker Art Gallery in Liverpool, which is where I'm from originally. 
So I've all but lost my Scouse accent now, to a degree. <laughs> but I haven't lost the childhood memories. So yes, my father was an amateur artist. He was also ex-army. He served in Cyprus. But he also became alcoholic and was extremely violent to me and my children, to me and my members of family. And it was up to the age of 13 that my childhood was filled with physical and mental abuse from my father. He would beat us on a daily basis. And still, I have one or two of those physical scars to this day. And so being indoors was never a safe place for me when I grew up. So in many ways, from very young, I was drawn to the outdoors. It was a better place for me to be, a place for, for escape, to find happiness, to distance myself, a place to be learned, to just be me. And I reckon that outdoors has helped to heal me too in many ways. So for myself and perhaps all of us, we face a challenge in our attitude to the great outdoors. The COVID-19 virus has placed the outdoors into a kind of no-go zone, perhaps. It seems less safe, a less safe place to be. And will the current situation change our attitude to being in the great outdoors? So what will the outdoor spaces and the abundant landscape mean to us all now? Will it still be a safe place? Speaking for myself, I hope the outdoors remains a free, open and healthy space for us all to enjoy, a place to escape, to inspire and to find peace and maybe even some healing. <laughs>